the German energy transition. According to the Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy, one goal of this transition is to take the last nuclear power plant off the grid in the year 2022. In the passes leading up to achieving that goal, the use of renewable energies will increase. Also, we will get more out of energy by using it efficiently. But what does reality look like? Here, the Renewable Energy Act has led to a massive construction of renewable energy plants. However, this construction was carried out from a different perspective than the setup of the power plants and grids. Since 1900, they had always been installed according to the regional energy consumption. In contrast, installations to produce green energy were set up where the conditions such as wind flow and solar radiation appear to be ideal. The military and agricultural areas in northeastern Germany, which were shut down after the reunification, offered enough space for solar fields and wind parks. Renewable energy installations were built en masse, but in the scarcely populated area, with little industry, the energy demand remained low. This has created a tense grid situation. In Germany, the national average of electricity created by renewable energies is about 27%. In most high voltage grids in the northeast, this already comes up to 100%. However, this does not lead to full supply, but to days with high regenerative overproduction, and to days when no green energy is produced at all. As of today, a regular storm front in northeast Germany already creates such a large amount of surplus energy that it exceeds the accessible storage capacity in that area by 10 times. Short time changes of the wind speed are already causing huge amounts of fluctuating feed-ins, which have to be balanced by conventional plants. This decreases efficiency, increases CO2 emissions and wears out the installations. One way to diffuse the situation lies in transporting the surpluses to other regions. For that, the grids have to be expanded. But this grid expansion is not really moving forward. Meanwhile, a safe energy supply can only be assured with grid operators cutting and even shutting down conventional and regenerative producers. This already happens on about 250 days per year. Researchers of the Brandenburg University of Technology, Cottbus Senftenberg, are now working on a solution of how to positively use these regenerative surpluses within the capital region. To do so, different energy producers, storages and consumers are recorded and evaluated by measurement techniques. And this is how it works. Grid control centers from all over Brandenburg and Berlin are transferring their data onto the server of Smart Capital Region. They are located inside the instrumentation and control room on the central campus of the university. These real conditions are then visualized inside the neighboring visitor center smart energy grids. This way we can demonstrate how, where and when surpluses occur in Brandenburg and which controllable loads in Berlin can be supplied with them. Different scenarios can be researched and clearly visualized. To demonstrate further actual consumptions 25 university buildings have been equipped with smart meters. These provide information about the energy consumption on campus. The generated data are also transmitted towards the control room of the project. Apart from demonstrating the real situation, the interaction of single components and technologies is also practically researched and optimized in the project. Therefore, different model installations have been set up on campus. With these model installations, it is possible to transform surplus energy into gas, heat or into mobility for electric vehicles. The installations are interlinked and controlled via information technology. The central control regulation is located at the visitor center. This way, a smart grid is formed in which the future of energy distribution can be researched and experienced. 
The goal is to balance consumption and generation of electrical energy while covering the demand with regenerative energy to the greatest degree possible. But let's have a closer look at the university smart grid. Here, a photovoltaic system converts solar radiation into electrical energy. The green energy generated in this way supports the charging station park or the upstream grid of the university. It can also be stored in a stationary battery. This guarantees that e-cars and charging station park are constantly supplied with solar energy. The electrical energy produced by the photovoltaic installation can also be converted into heat. For this purpose, a thermal energy storage has been set up on campus. The storage is loaded by cartridge heaters. A combined heat and power plant, a so-called CHP, is also part of the smart grid. The CHP can be operated by heat or current regulation. When it's heat regulated, it produces according to the actual heat demand. In this case, electricity is only produced as a byproduct, irrespective of whether it is really needed at the moment. In contrast, the CHP produces according to the actual current demand when operated in current regulated mode. In this case, heat becomes the byproduct. The heat produced by the CHP is also applied to the thermal energy storage. The thermal energy storage is heating a neighboring hall complex, forming part of the power to heat technology. In summer, this excess heat can be utilized to air condition the hall complex by using a special cooling unit. The CHP also fulfills another task within the real laboratory. It is not only the consumers of the power grid that need energy for light, power and heat. The grid itself needs a special form of energy in order to function the so-called reactive power. Reactive power is nowadays supplied by large-scale power plants. But who is going to take over that supply when they have been shut down due to high feed-ins coming from renewables? The CHP uses a technique that can be helpful in this regard. Another technology which plays a major part in smart capital region is called power to vehicle or vehicle to grid. This means that the ECAS can not only just be fueled on electric energy, but also feed it back into the grid when needed. For that purpose, 15 ECAS capable of bidirectional charging have been constructed in cooperation with the vehicle manufacturer German ECAS. These cars are technically equipped to communicate with the charging station. To do so, the driver connects his car to one of the charging stations within the charging station park. He then puts his desired time of departure, the expected range and spare capacity into a display located inside the dashboard of the car. In case that he's driving an electric Sears production vehicle, he can use a charging app that was developed at the university primarily for that purpose. The information is then passed on to the energy management system of the charging station park, which is located inside the instrumentation and control room. With the help of a task manager that is also installed in there, all charging processes are combined into a central system. The energy capacity of the e-cars capable of bidirectional charging is summed up and forms one great storage facility. With the maximum energy accessible from the storage, a family of four could supply their one family home with energy for up to 19 days. Therefore, the e-cars turn into mobile energy storages that cannot just take regenerative surpluses in, but are also capable of feeding them back. E-cars, charging station park and CHP play a special role within the smart grid. They form a joint system of installations that can run independently from the campus grid. Such an autonomous grid is referred to as a microgrid. Another option to take regenerative surpluses off the grid involves the electrolysis apparatus. Within it, electric energy is used to dissociate water into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen can be stored or in small amounts added to the natural gas grid. Together with CO2, hydrogen can be transformed into natural gas, which makes it usable in the transport sector. The electrolysis apparatus belongs to the power to gas technology. In smart capital region, all these different producers, storages and users are brought together and are operated in a joint system. Right on the campus of the Brandenburg University of Technology, Cottbus-Senftenberg, a smart grid is formed. Here, 
the vision of a capital region that is smartly interlinked becomes alive and turns into an exemplar for the German energy transition. Smart Capital Region is a core project within the Berlin Brandenburg International Showcase for Electromobility. It is funded by the Federal State of Brandenburg 